Hello, Jim? Yes. Hey, how you doing? Hey, once again, it was a bit confusing, but thanks uh, for doing my podcast, man. How's it going so far? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, so, you started off the Mouthful of Shame tour. Um, kicked off last night, right? It did in Chicago, yeah. It was so much better than I expected. I expect the worst when I go in and do a gig, especially starting a tour. And uh, I can't, I, I haven't been to Chicago in a few years. I can't believe how good it was. Okay, that's perfect. That's perfect. Hey, um, I just want to be upfront and very transparent with you, mainly because you're very transparent. I listened to you on Opie and Anthony, well, now Opie and Jim, and um, quite honestly, you're one of the most honest people I've ever encountered, period. Well, thank you. And um, we've met before several times. I'm not asking you to remember. I'm not asking you. <laughs> um, it was a while ago. I think we first met during the virus tour. And that was a while ago. And um, you signed my book, actually. Your um, the Happy Endings book. And hey, I hate your guts. So. Oh, okay. Thanks for that, man. Um, it seemed like you just came here, and I was at the Royal Oak show last year when you were getting your stuff ready for contextually inadequate. Yeah. And um. Well, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead, please. That that was after our shot. Contextually inadequate. So uh, a lot of the material is probably the same as it was for that show because uh, so people saw that I'd say probably 25% of the material is different but the rest is probably the same as in, uh, in September I mean in Andiamo Theater right? Uh, no this is well yeah yes I'm sorry yes you were at Andiamo's and this is at Royal Oak so yeah yes that, that was back in September that was uh, mostly the same material that I'm doing now but this, this, that hasn't been filmed yet Contextually inadequate. I was touring on that, but I was doing different material. Well, I mean, my whole point for saying all of that was that you churn out material pretty quickly. Like it's almost like a new hour every year. I mean, yeah, I, I get very bored very fast, so I try to shoot it and get it done, and then I want to talk about something else. You know, that, that's I, I, I can only do it for certain for so much time. And back to what I was saying about you being open, I was um, getting stuff together to interview you for this phone call, for the podcast. And I got to be honest, you're pretty hard to interview because you're so open. Because it's like some of the questions I want to ask you, you already covered in great detail. Does that um, does that happen a lot? Yeah, I mean, if, if some people don't do research, I mean... I don't, uh, there's nothing I'm worried about talking about or won't talk about. And I've interviewed enough people on the other end where I know that there's nothing worse than when you're talking to somebody and they don't want to be forthcoming. So I always really try to be forthcoming when I'm in a being interviewed. Okay, and yeah, that's one thing I kind of talked about your openness. And um, I'm trying not to like do that thing where you're just asking hack questions. Because like when you're interviewing an interviewer, you kind of know the tricks. You don't, you know what I mean? So it's like, I do, yeah. and I don't want to, like, one thing I do admire, and I use this in my own podcast, in my own form of media, is like, not only the honesty that you're very open, but you're very critical about how the press has this, like, gotcha, tattletale psyche of how everyone's trying to catch you slipping up or something. Yeah, that's exactly what the whole country is. They, they just do for representative yeah, I, I never understood that because, like, the same thing that you're condemning someone for, you're probably going to do that within a week of you condemning someone else. Yeah, and the problem is then when all of a sudden you do the thing you condemn other people for, you cry when, when everybody comes after you for it. Yeah, that's what we've kind of turned into. So it's either we should all stop doing it or we should all just accept the fact that we're just a bunch of voyeuristic little twats. Um, who like to catch each other, but we can't have it both ways. Why is that, do you think? Uh, people are self-centered and people are narcissistic and people are nosy. I think that's all it comes down to. Um, people feel entitled to information, but they don't feel obligated to give it up about themselves. Hmm. I guess, man. I'm not smart enough to really figure that out of why people do it. I, I always imagine people are individuals and they just like to take people down when they're doing good. That's how I always figured it. Um, like one of the things like I do like, like I, I mentioned about how you interview on O and J or O and A, 
um, you you even had your show on Vice where you interviewed people and um, one of the coolest ones I saw among the Tyson one was pretty cool. You got a chance to interview Freeway Ricky Ross. Were you scared at any point or because it looked like you were having a good time? Yeah, no, no, he was great. I mean, um, I talked to Rick a lot since then. He came to one of my shows in uh, in Phoenix when I was out there last year, and we had him on the radio since. He's, a, he's you know, he's he was actually very easy to be around, and uh, you know, he, he's a good interview subject because you know, drug dealers are interesting people. I mean, they they have a story, so I knew he'd be fun to talk to, and he was great. Okay, okay. Among that, I mean, among the many projects you have, you have. Uh, the radio show, your great stand up, yeah, one of my favorites personally. Um, you have the advice show, um, you're doing the animation thing now with a lot of the characters on the radio. Yes, um, you know, we're trying to see if people want it, if there's any kind of a funding for it. Um, you know, hopefully, uh, people want to see it. I don't know if they're going to want to. But, um, you know, the, the pilot did mixed reactions on, so, uh, you know, we'll see. I don't know if that's going to go anywhere, to be honest with you. Okay, um, what, I mean, what, everyone's not digging on Uncle Paul all of a sudden? Well, no, they don't like the animation style, and it's all this weird stuff, um, you know, so we'll, we'll see. No okay. We'll see. Okay, I know this is kind of like scattered all over the place. Um, we talked about your interviewing skills. Um, is something like that, do you think um, if the animation thing doesn't see the light of day, um, do you think that'd be more of a, you're going back to like the Vice show you had, the interview show? Because it reminded me more of the old school interviews where people actually got a chance to express their opinion other than like six, seven, uh, six minute sound bites or something for the web where people actually got a chance to talk and evolve. Do you think you would find yourself a little bit, you know, on that side of the fence? Well, that's kind of uh, what I wanted that show to be. But um, for whatever reason, Vice didn't want to do more. Maybe it wasn't that good. I mean, um, I don't know. I, I wouldn't go back to that with Vice. They wouldn't want to do it. I, but I would, uh, I, I'm doing some kind of a pilot for IFC. We haven't conceptualized it yet. So hopefully that will work. Um, you know. At least I hope it works. Uh, I'm not doing anything else with my style, I don't think. Oh, that's unfortunate, man. Um, no, it's okay. That's good. good guys. It's just, it's just the mix didn't work, whatever it happens. Well, yeah, I'm not saying like you're talking shit about them or anything like that. It's just, yeah. you know, I'm saying this as a fan of the show. You know, like, oh, yeah. man, yeah. Right. Um, do you find yourself probably going back into writing? I like your books. I'm the owner. Hell, you signed them for me. Um, do you find yourself going back to writing another book? Yeah, I'm just lazy when it comes to writing. <laughs> I probably should do another book. Um, it's just kind of, it's just a little bit lazy. And, and, I, and I really, uh, I haven't, it's harder for me to write now because I'm always in front of the phone or the computer and there's a million distractions so it's very hard for me to actually sit down and get myself to write you know? but um, I, do, I do want to do a third book I just don't know what it's going to be about or what I'll do it well, I mean, the last two, um, in your first one, you talked a lot about personal experience and you talked about, um, you know, how you got to where you were towards the end of the book. A lot of your early influences like Richard Pryor, starting comedy, I, you were in your early 20s. And then the second book was more about how you take on the media and people you just plain may not like or have a problem with. I would have think the third book would be somewhere where you are now um journey i guess yeah i don't know i mean it, I, it, I could i just don't know if i have anything to say in book form at the moment like i just haven't done it because i can't think of what i would want to write about for the entire book unless it's just exploits um but again i, I talk about those on the air so a lot of times once you talk about it you don't feel like to write about it so that's been my dilemma is I talk about all this shit, I just don't know how much of it I want to, uh, you don't have the energy or the hunger to write it. That makes sense. That makes sense because it's already out there. Is that like yeah, a... Exactly. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Is that like a continuing theme? Is like 
being on the radio gives you so much content to talk about to the point where you feel as though you talked about it. Sort of like a double-edged sword, you know? Yeah, and then one thing it's like hard to sit down and actually put it on paper. Yeah, okay. Okay. That makes sense, man. Um... Also, lastly, man, um, I know you're busy. I know you're about to get out of here. And you're actually going to visit me, um, us in a few hours. So I want to just say thanks. Um, this is a, I got two more questions. The first one is kind of hack, forgive me. Um, do you have, like, you're good with interviews. You have a dream interview besides Ozzy because you've had, as a fanboy to another fanboy, you've had multiple experiences dealing with your idols, you know, and that was just, that was just cool to see you, like, living a dream, you know? Is there anyone else you haven't talked to yet? I'd love to interview, obviously, a sitting president. That will never happen. I'd love to interview Obama, of course. Uh, Farrakhan, I've always wanted to interview Farrakhan. He seems like he's a pretty interesting guy. Um, you know, or, or Mickey Barnes is another guy I've always wanted to interview. I interviewed Frank Lucas as well. Um, yeah, I remember that. Frank, that yeah, I remember Frank Lucas. You know, he has arthritis and it was hard to understand him. Uh, you know, guys like that, I would love to talk more to. Or well, fucking El Chapo would be a great guy to interview. You know, a anybody like that. Um, but those are all interviews that will never happen, and I know that. <laughs> They're just kind of like, I find three guys I would love to talk to. Okay, okay, um, and lastly, I, I, I hate to close with such a hack question, but like when you're open and honest, what type of questions do you get the most, stuff that you kind of wish people would stop asking you? Well, there's really nothing in particular. Um, the only thing I don't like when people ask me is when people go like, so like if you're doing a radio interview and they don't have any questions and they go, okay, where do you want us to lead you? And they just want you to sit there and do your material. And that's, that's the only type of thing that I don't like. Any other question, it's fair game. Um, I mean, I'll answer it as many times as people ask it. You know, that could never bother me. Okay, okay. Um, or let's flip it. What questions you would like people to ask you from, like, future reference, you know, so you can avoid that situation? You know, it's funny. I, 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 that's a great thing. I can't even think of a question that I wish they were asking. I just know bad ones when I hear them. Like... Um, I just think it depends on what's going on. Like sometimes I want to give my opinion about politics, other times I know nobody gives a shit what my opinion about politics is. It really changes from day to day what I want people to ask me. Um, because you just want to feel like you're having a conversation. And it's not always easy to do that, but I can't think of anything that I wish that they were asking me. Like I never felt like I wish they were, because if I felt that way I would just bring it up. Like when I'm being interviewed, I would just segue from their question to whatever I want to talk about. So, I guess whatever feels alive in the moment. Okay, uh, fair enough. Hey, as a super fanboy, I am choking back all of my fanness towards you. So, I, I, like, I, I gotta ask, how do you think I did? Interviewer to interviewer. It was good, it was very good. Yeah, the only problem is my phone. The connection's not great, not on my end. You sound good to me, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of crackling, but probably makes me my headset. Okay, no, it's just me probably shaking my um, devices where I'm just kind of like, man, don't fuck this up, don't fuck this up, don't fuck this up. No, <laughs> Alright, well, like I said, the um, show is tonight. Jim, hey, thanks for calling into the podcast so much. Um, big fan. I'm going to be that guy all the way clapping, smiling like a lunatic in the back of um, Roll Oak. So. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks, and um, talk to you soon. All right, bye.